did something! Et l'idée où Welcome back to another video. As you can see, I'm out driving Alan, my van. Um, but unfortunately, we have a limp mode issue as if you saw the first video of the van, you'll realize that I was doing 40 mile hour going over the M62 in limp mode. Now, we're gonna try and investigate that today and find any possible causes of what might be dropping us into uh, limp mode. No idea yet. So stick with the video and we will investigate and replace any parts that need changing. Right, so we are trying to diagnose why I have this P0299 fault code, the one that says I have an under boost, which when I drive, it definitely has an under boost because it's horrendous. It drops into limp mode because there's like no boost in the lower RPM range. So I'm gonna fire up and I have a can of brake cleaner over there and I'm gonna spray all of the pipes, all of the connections, anywhere where there could be a boost leak anywhere that I can get to at least um, theoretically if the engine note changes it's sucked in the brake cleaner and that is where my leak is and I'm conscious it's about to rain so we shall do our best are we in New Trail? yes we are and fire <clears throat> And just start spraying. So I ran the engine with uh, you know a bit of brake cleaner, squirting around all the connections, and I didn't hear any noticeable differences in the engine note, which makes me think there probably isn't a leak, or that I found so far. So the next thing I want to do is I want to take the uh, grill off and have a better look at the uh, intercooler because it's behind this grill. I've already pulled the bottom now, I just need to undo the tops. So I'm going to have a quick look at that. Uh, and then I might have to have a look at around the turbo. Now the turbo on this engine is at the back of the engine, underneath all the intake and the EGR system that is just there. Uh, I'm going to get to Alan in the air and have a better look. So I have Alan in the air. It is very high, but it gives me enough room to get back because I've got to get quite a long way underneath to have a look at the turbo. Um, this is Millie, my uh, little impact gun. Millie is amazing. She just makes light work of everything. I drop that one. And I save that one. Now the grill, I believe, is loose. Put Millie up there. Let's not stand on everything. Already can't see where I've dropped that screw. I swear I dropped it straight down. Anyway, so this has obviously been screwed in extra because they're extra screw holes. So let's put that there. I wonder if that can be polished up. I don't know. Um, and we can't see much more of the intercooler. The intercooler is. Uh, this is the bit I was uh, looking at before and wondered if that was potentially leaking. So I have sprayed that, that's probably why it's looking wetter than it was. Uh, I know that these are problem areas on some people's um, buses and they have had issues in the past. Now, there's nothing obvious which would make me, oh no, oh, what is that? Can, can if I get the camera lens in at the bottom, it looks really raggedy at the at the bottom of that. That now makes me want to investigate further because that is not right. I don't think I can get it very good on the camera. 
it should be a nice straight line across the bottom but it's not it's bumpy can i get my fingers to it no there's just not enough room <gasps> i have an endoscope haha <laughs> So this is going to be trying hard to film whilst also showing on a camera. So I'm trying to line up my, uh, this is my um, endoscope. Not for medical use, might I add. Uh, I'm trying to line it up on the screen. Whilst looking at the screen, whilst looking at the camera, whilst also trying to line up my oscilloscope. Not oscilloscope, endoscope. So they're all jaggedy. And they shouldn't be. But then there's this bit which looks very oily and wet. And again, it shouldn't be oily and wet. That's not somewhere I've sprayed. Yeah, dropping my camera. It's dry from the front. <laughs> I like this look. Do, 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 do. But it's not dry from the back. I'm going to see if I can get the camera in from a different angle because I'm struggling with the angles at the moment. But I do think uh, I may have to set this into colour out just to have a look, which means the bumper will have to come off. And that is a massive bumper, so that's probably going to be a pain in the back. So I got a little bit of a better angle, but I'm still not 100% sure on what I was seeing. So the easiest thing to do is just take it off. So I'm going to get the bumper off which will be a pain in the butt because I've never done one of these before and I assume it's very much like a lot of vehicles I'm going to take the headlights out just because they're going to give me more access anyway but I don't know if there's anything holding underneath there's clips in the arch, there's probably clips all along the bottom and then there'd be clips in the other arch and so on so on I'll put you on a time lapse and I'm going to get cracking I'm not doing well I've took most of the bolts out I think at the bottom got these corner pieces out which took forever to get off got the bolts up behind them I've done the inner arches headlights are loose but they I now know don't come off until the bumpers off but there's still something holding them in these corners somewhere and I haven't figured it out yet I've not found it and it's getting dark so and it's starting to rain so they're muddy I'm gonna have to uh call it a day and then come back to this video in the next day Raining. it's the next day and I finally managed to get uh, two of the last two bolts that they are oh, oh, there I'm going to drop the uh, arch down now I'm going to get this off get the other side off and then hopefully I think I've got them all so then the bumper should come off unless there's something around the fog lights holding it up I don't think there is and there we go, as soon as I'm done them. <laughs> yeah, the bumper's dropping. I've got the other side to do yet. But that looks promising. Uh, I'll have plugs to take off, which I'll sort as and when I've done them. So now I need to quickly take this arch down. There's a screw at the back I need to undo. Uh, and then this will come down and I can do the last few bolts. I can get the bumper off. Then we'll get the headlights out. Not that we need to get the headlights out. Although, it's good to do with. Uh, I don't know, but either way, bumper's coming off. So if you was watching carefully on that little time lapse, you will see that uh, the intercooler is off, and here is the little intercooler. Now, this was the thing that I was looking at with the endoscope saying it looks a bit jaggedy and it has been uh, leaking at some point because it is wet so my first thoughts are is it blowing there chances are it possibly is you look here it's also oily that's coming from that top corner I'm not 100% sure yet but I'm pretty sure that that is uh, leaking from there especially under boost it might not be the cause of my main fault but it's certainly not helping and i will certainly be losing a bit of boost pressure from there and it's only gonna get worse so i actually think we need a new intercooler but i will do a bit more research before i come to that decision
Mm. Interesting. So I've been doing a bit of research online and it's like 80 quid for a new intercooler um, of OE quality. So I'm going to get another intercooler because at the end of the day uh, it's going to get worse at some point. So I'm at the point where it's pretty much off so I may as well replace it. So this will be uh, a pause in this video now until a few days later when my intercooler arrives. It's actually bowed out there as well. It's actually bowed. So yeah, there's definitely a fault there. I think that's the right decision, especially 80 quid for a part. Um, all my pipes look okay. There's a bit of oil in the pipe. Uh, it's not unheard of in these, especially with the, these sort of setups. Uh, nothing I'm concerned about as of yet. But yeah, there's a bit of oil. But there's not a massive amount of oil in the intercooler, but so that, that goes to the point. Not a massive amount of oil has been blown out, so it's definitely blowing. So, go intercooler. Shiny stuff. Welcome back to probably four days later after filming this uh, other part of the video. The van is relatively back together because I've been testing something else and I've been out on the road driving. But in the meantime, my brand new intercooler has turned up, as you can see here. This intercooler was off uh, the old interwebs, off of the eBay, and it was £65 with a five-year warranty. Can't really go wrong with that, can you? So, happy with my purchase. So now I just need to quickly Drop the front bumper again, which doesn't have all its screws on at the moment, and take the grill off and swap the intercooler and put the pipes on, put it all back together. You don't need to see me take all this off again, but when I get to the point of taking the intercooler off again, I will show you putting the new one on. Well, I'll show you side by side first. So, I'm going to do that. It's very cold. And like magic, we are all back off. So here we have, you know, we always like to do a compare the old versus the new. So obviously the new looks nice and straight, which is good. And yet the old one looks very bloated here on this section where it's oily. Um, it generally has this little bow to it where it's obviously nice and straight. So there's definitely issues with that one. Whether this is the main issue on my van, I have no idea, but there's an issue there and there's an issue there. So for 65 pound, because it's a bargain really, I'm just gonna replace it stock for stock, like for like. Um, I say like for like, it's not a genuine part, but you know. You can see that there was a, a original VW one. This is not original VW one. But it has a five year warranty on it, so that's all that matters to me. So now I need to get it fitted, which is actually relatively easy because the intercooler only has two bolts. It even bolts, the screws. Drops back into its slots, screw into the top, connect the pipes on, make sure your pipes are on, otherwise you'll blow it off. Blow the pipe off, that is. Uh, you can see there that we do have some oil, so there is some oil getting into the uh, system uh, and that will be probably from the turbo. It could be from, I don't know, I don't, I'm not 100% sure how the EGR makeup and all that works yet on this engine. I have a lot of research to do, but there is oil in the system. Uh, that's common for most diesels really. Uh, yeah, we need to get this back together now and it's freezing. So our lovely new intercooler is now in place. The pipes are connected and we have the clips. Uh, it actually came with, they're the original clips, it actually came with some new clips. I thought just in case the old ones were worn or spragged or something like that, bent, you know, I thought, well, I may as well use the new ones, it's come with them. So you can see that they're locked in place. Obviously there's a new one both sides. Make sure that they're locked in place. That's with the little arms going through the gaps because that locks in the pipe. And um, before you put any of these back together, make sure that you grab the pipes and you really pull at the back of them to make sure they're still attached. Because you don't want to be starting your engine up, running it, getting your boost pressure, and popping the boost pipe off, and then uh, you've you've got to take your grill and stuff off to fix it again. So now it's just a case of um, putting the bumper on, putting the grill back on and taking it for a drive and hopefully it drives okay okay time to get it back together last but not least the grill
Oh no! I lied. Yeah, I lied. I forgot about these things. I hope someone else noticed. I left it as a comment. Are these sure or just? Damn it. Now we need to drop it down and take it for a drive. My van's filthy on the outside. It's even gone anyway. It's just from being on the drive. Alright, coil light. Stop. Not sure if it needs new uh, glow plugs or something at some point. It starts alright. Just the first time can be a bit iffy, but just the first time. So now we need to uh, take it for a drive and see if we're going to limp mode or anything. Because obviously I've still got this boost code. Well, I don't know about now, but I had this boost code. But I know I needed to change that intercooler. So not saying it's fixed the boost issue, but I need to change the intercooler. So you know, swings and roundabouts. Take it for a drive. Okay, so we've just fitted the intercooler and we're taking it out for a spin. There is no uh, boost leaks or anything like that and everything is fitted as it should be but the power is not as restored as I was expecting. It still drops into limp which unfortunately means I've got to do some more investigating and I've got to figure out the reason why we're going into limp. Um, but in terms of an intercooler install, there's your video. Uh, thank you very much I will see you in the next video which will most likely find out why we're going into limp mode um, and we'll hopefully get it fixed in that video. Take care, stay humble, bye bye. I'm mending something! Really do. <laughs>